So this video is inspired by one of the cases that I recently made a very elaborate automation for and that was a US based law firm and they were having a unique problem that they cannot expose any of their client data to any of the ChatGPT or Gemini models out there because they were afraid that their confidential information might leak to these AI providers and they might use it for we don't know for what purpose and they came to me and asked me to create a completely localized AI workflow for them and in this video I'm going to teach you a part of that whole automation you will learn how to do all the AI magic and all the automation magic without relying on a single cloud-based service everything will happen on device and no data will leave your device at any point of time so let's start so basically like I told you it was a law firm and the utmost important things for them were privacy client confidentiality and trust and using any cloud-based service might break at least one of that right so th these were three commandments that I had to follow while creating their automations one is no cloud Second is on device and third everything has to be completely private. So the plan was to do a local init and installation for them and also doing all the AI processing using localized models for which I used Olama. And this is how the automation looked like. It looks very simple but trust me it's extremely useful and provides a ton of value to the business. And let me now break down all of this for you in a very very simple way. But before that, if you are new on this channel, hi, my name is Rish and I do two things. One is this YouTube channel in which you are watching this video. I teach business automations that save you a ton of time, a ton of money and is a lot of fun. Also, I run a company called Talkflow AI in which we develop and deploy voice AI agents to businesses which are capable of handling all of their customer support as well as outreach campaigns. So if you're looking for any custom automations or voice AI agents, the link to consultation would be in the description of every single video. So now let's start with how would you install N8N locally? And for that, I have actually made a complete video which you can find right on my channel. Basically, this is the easiest way to install N8N using NPM without the hassle of installing Docker or any complicated methods. And if you are too lazy to watch that video, just let me give you a simple one line trick on how to install it. So you go to your terminal and just this command and n8n would be installed on your local host, which you can then access on a URL like this on your local machine, right? So now the stage has been set. You have installed n8n locally and you have won half the battle. Now, next thing is how to get and manipulate the local files that are going to be there on your device and then how to do the AI magic on top of that. For that, I had used something called as local file trigger that is available only on the local installed edition of anything. So, so to tell you from the start, if I hit tab, I can select local file as a trigger for the system. And if I show you the setting in this, I have enabled it to trigger on change of any file in a particular folder. And in my case, this is the folder that I'm concerned about. And here I can watch for anything. I can watch for file added, file changed, file deleted or anything else. So what this will do is it will continuously watch a specific folder. And if something happens inside that folder, meaning a new file is added, a file is taken away or whatever, this particular trigger will initialize. In my case, I just want to trigger it when the file is added, right? Now, the next node is once this trigger is triggered, I have to also read that file from the disk. And this is again totally local. So for that, I'll press tab and I'll search for read or write files from disk. And this will enable you to either read or write any file from that particular folder. The setting was that I have to read the file and the file has to be this path which will get triggered when that particular file gets added in that folder. So simply speaking, if I had an empty folder and I added a file inside that, which mostly, which would be a PDF file in my client scenario, but it can be any other file in your case. So it will fetch that path automatically and it will read the contents of that PDF file. Now, once the file is read, we have to extract the information from that file 
and for that I am using the extract node of uh, init n and then I'll select extract from pdf. This will change depending upon what kind of file you're having in that particular folder. But in my case, I'm having a PDF. That's why I'm going to extract all the information from that PDF in this particular node. And this right here is also a very useful automation in itself because what we are doing is we are parsing a whole PDF file totally on device, locally and without sending any information to any of the cloud providers. So this in itself could be a useful sub automation for any of your other things because passing PDF itself is a very popular use case of all the automation tools out there, right? Now, once we have passed uh, the whole uh, PDF, what we have to do is we have to deploy an AI agent and then ask for a summary or bullet points or whatever your client needs or you need as a business to do. And here comes the magic. Because usually the chat model that we select in any of our automations is usually from this list of Anthropic, Google, uh, OpenAI and all of that. But since this has to be a totally local automation, we'll use something called as Olama. Let me show you what that looks like. So we go to olama.com and this is what you have to download for your machine. Uh, it can be Windows, Linux or Mac OS. Once this is download, what this allows you to do is download all these models locally on device and do all of the AI stuff inside Olama. So let me show you in the background. I have been downloading uh, DeepSeek R1 on my Olama instance. So if I type Olama, it will show you all these available commands that are available for you right now. And if I type Olama list, I have DeepSeq R1 latest as my list model, right? And if I, let's say, show you how to run it in the command line itself, let's say, I'll type Olama run DeepSeq R1 latest and it will initialize DeepSeq R1 and we'll be able to communicate with DeepSeq R1 within our terminal of Mac itself. Let me ask you which model are you and it's going to reply to me. It's thinking <laughs> and it's also showing me the thinking process, which is great. And yep. So, yep. Hello, I'm Deep. Hello, I'm Deep Seek. So this is how it works inside terminal. But for our automation, we have to use it inside our automation, right? So here, we'll have an AI agent exactly as we used to do in all of our automations. And we'll select Olama as the chat model. And we'll select DeepSeek Avon as the model right here, right? So now we have triggered our automation, read the file from the folder, extracted the PDF text from that file. And here my prompt is, what are the major findings in this particular file? Output it in beautiful HTML format right and the next node is going to be convert this file to a text file because this node is going to give me an output which is going to be all text but there has to be a way to convert that text into a file which will then add to the same folder right so here i will again look for convert to file and here we'll choose convert to text this one so this one is my node which is convert to text file. And here I will just put output as the text input file and data as the output in the field. So this is how it will go. And then we have to add this file inside the same folder from which we fetched the original file. So original file was in a PDF like this. And our file has to be in HTML, which is going to be a private summary or whatever you want to wish to extract or process from that file. And this node is going to write that file again in the same path location, but the file name will be now report.html, right? So I've taken this path from here and I have added some JavaScript splitting so that we only get this particular file name and we are able to add a report.html in the end so that 
the result is cohesive and we are not having any random file names. File names is something I am very particular about because I have seen a lot of people having tons of random file names named Untitled 1, Untitled 5, Final 1, Final 6 and they have no idea what file is what. So I am very particular about naming the files in correct way and this is why this path and file name looks like this. Let me show you this automation in its full glory. For this, I have chosen this Anthropic uh, ebook, which is available on Anthropic's blog. And this tells you how to build trusted AI in enterprise environments. And this is a 35 page PDF. So all they need to do right now with my automation is just have a folder named maybe their firm's name or whatever, and just dump all of these PDF documents one by one. And my automation will run in the background and it will figure out all the major findings in that particular document, which is a PDF file and create a beautiful HTML file as a result. Let me just show you how it functions in real time, right? So for that, let me take this away and let me take this away. Okay, so now the folder is totally empty. Let me make it slightly left, make it here. And now I'll save it and execute our workflow, right? Now, the moment I paste this file, it should run, okay? It has already read the file and it has extracted the PDF, uh, the details from that file very, very quickly. You can see this is all the text in that 35 page PDF. And now the Olama model is running on device. Nothing is being shared online to any cloud based models and here you can see i have a lot of memory allocation for olama because the model is running locally which is exactly what we want so as you can see the workflow is completed and we have a file so this is what the report looks like and it has actually generated a summary out of this whole uh big pdf 35 page PDF. So this is exactly what we wanted to have a crux of everything using AI, which is basically like running locally and is not sending any of the data to any of the cloud providers. So that was it. That was very simple, but effective automation. And also uh, you can use a lot of these things in creating other automations locally like you can have a folder which is being watched by your init and automation and do a lot more things than just extracting pdf and using ai on that you can use a uh, image manipulation so there is an image node right so you can have let's say you want to crop images or create images or like add border to images in bulk you know you can just have uh, all of these things done or you can have other things like you can have information extractor, sentiment analysis, summarization, text classification, anything. Once you have read the files from your local disk, you can do any of the automations that are available in N8N. And that makes the local host version of N8N so powerful. So I hope this was useful and check out my channel for more such automations. And if you need a custom one, link to book a meeting would be in the description. And I'll see you in the next one.